The perfect midseason plan does not exist until now. Welcome in to this edition of Seahawks Today by Chat Sports. Tyler Jones here as we have reached the halfway point of the Seahawks 2023 season. Seattle coming off an embarrassing loss last week to the Baltimore Ravens. What do they need to do to get back on track as they gear up for the second half of 2023? I have five keys to fix this Seattle Seahawks team. Before we get to those, let's go over the outlook of where the Seahawks stand right now. Five and three record. The NFL's 17th ranked scoring offense at 21.4 points per game. 22nd ranked scoring defense at 21.9 points uh, allowed per game. And currently, they're tied for the third best record in the NFC and also tied for the best record in the NFC West. Still two matchups to go with the San Francisco 49ers to potentially break up said tiebreaker. We'll go over the midseason plan in full detail in a moment, but first, this week here on Seahawks Today, in the lead-up between now and Sunday, we are in a sub-battle with our Commander's channel, the Commander's Report with goofy-looking Jack Sperry. We are a little bit behind in the sub-battle, got some catching up to do, and Dog, he was talking his smack. You got to listen to this. Commanders taking on the Seahawks this week, and let me tell you right now, we just got that win against the New England Patriots, and guess what, Seahawks fans? We're coming for you next. The Ravens just beat the shit out of you guys, 37-3. to This week, we're pulling off the upset. Commies, we're beating you on the field. We're also beating you off the field with this subscriber battle this week. Go Commies, and F the Seahawks. I am not losing a sub-battle to a literal communist, Okay. We are subscribing today and taking it to the commies. We don't want to just win on the football field, but off the football field as well. Prove why we're the better fan base. Subscribe now for free, and we'll continue with today's show. The obvious one in the midseason plan is getting Abraham Lucas healthy. Abe Lucas, you could argue, is the best offensive lineman on this Seattle Seahawks team, but we haven't seen him since week one with that knee injury. And Pete Carroll said just the other day that Abe is close to returning to practice. They are steps in the right direction, but still not quite back just yet. He's not going to have surgery. Uh, he did go with an injection in lieu of said surgery. And so now we await to see when his return will be. At the moment, the Seahawks have done some patchwork to the offensive line. They did what they could to get through for a couple of weeks. We saw week one when both he and Charles Cross were down. Things looked pretty bad and pretty bleak. And they kind of played through things and made it work. But then last week was a pretty big setback in how well they struggled against the Baltimore Ravens. They need Abraham Lucas back sooner rather than later to really get this playoff push going to get this Seahawks offensive line at full strength. What's your confidence level with the Seahawks offensive line right now? Because, let's face it, it's been up and down, inconsistent, right? How do you feel about this group? It's our pin comment today. Weigh in, tell me what you think. One through ten, my confidence level, uh, I'm going to go about a six, personally. That would be the number I'd go with. Give me your number in the comment section let us know. Next on our midseason plan, sign Lel Collins. And a couple of things on this. First and foremost, the Seahawks – despite the moves that they've made recently to acquire Leonard Williams and Frank Clark and all that, if they want Lel Collins, they have the money to do so. And last week showed that there is a real need when it comes to this offensive line. Veteran talent that can play at a high level, Lel Collins can do just that. And even if Abraham Lucas comes back, are we really going to sit here and feel comfortable that Abraham Lucas is going to be okay to get through the whole season? I don't know about that. Leo Collins is right there in front of you as a good option in case something does happen. This is a guy that's played at a high level with a ton of experience. He's not that old, just seven years in the league. And going into 2022, Pro Football Focus said he was the 13th best offensive tackle. The fact that this guy remains unemployed is just mind-boggling to say the least. His numbers last year wasn't his best season. He struggled in pass blocking a bit, but he was solid in run blocking. The Seahawks could use all they 
all the help they could right now when it comes to run blocking. You don't have to go very far, though, in the hot tub time machine to find when Lel Collins last played at an extremely high level, 2021 to be exact, when all his grades were spectacular. Run block grade near 90, offensive grade of 82, pass block grade of 76.2. Even if Abe comes back at full strength, I want Leo Collins on this Seahawks team to give me that little bit of extra juice that this team is looking for. What do you think? Should the Seahawks sign Leo Collins right now? Why for yes, in for no? Chime in that comment section. Tell me what you think the Seahawks should make this move. Let me tell you about today's sponsor. We are brought to you by our friends at Game Time, the absolute best place to go when it comes to getting tickets to sporting events, concerts, comedy shows, theater productions, and more. The best seats for the lowest prices guaranteed. Here's what we're offering Seahawks Today viewers. If you download Game Time, create an account today, we're going to give you $20 off when you use the promo code SeahawksChat at checkout. The link is in the comments and the description of today's video. Terms and conditions do apply, and it's real easy with Game Time. You pick out the seat you want, you get the view of what the seat's going to look like, and then, bam, from there, you're paying, whether it's with your credit card or Apple Pay or Google Pay. It's real easy to use. I'm going to use Game Time this weekend when I head to Lawrence, Kansas, to go watch my Kansas Jayhawks beat the powerhouse that is the Manhattan Jaspers and some college hoops on Friday night. And then I'm going to use game time again on Saturday when I see my Jayhawks take on Texas Tech this weekend. So download game time. I'm giving you $20. You better spend it, okay? Are you hearing me right now? Use that $20 I'm giving you. Seahawks chats the promo code. Sign up today with game time. Check it out. Start saving some money for the best prices and the lowest uh, for the best seats in the lowest prices guaranteed. Number three on our midseason plan, getting Geno Smith back on track. Will the real Geno Smith please stand up? Look, I know that Geno has not played well as of late. The numbers are not pleasant with four touchdowns, six interceptions in the last four games, 239 passing yards. But we have seen Geno play at a high level before. And the truth of the matter is this. If Geno continues to play like we've seen, then they got to consider another option. I present you Drew Locke. Now, I don't want to have to do this. I don't want to have to turn to Drew Locke. But we heard from Pete Carroll say this week, if things don't start going the right direction, then they might have to consider making a change here. So with that said, I think, Drew, I think Gino is still the better option. But Drew Locke's right there. If this doesn't get going soon, the Seahawks have to do what's in their best interest. This is a team with playoff aspirations that believes they can compete for a championship. Whether it's Drew, whether it's Geno, they got to have a quarterback they can trust. And Geno is still the best option for this team. He's got to play to his full potential to get this thing going. I don't want to have to go to Drew, no offense, but that's the best option for Seattle is Geno playing to his full potential. This one, kind of a given, but it needs to be said. This team's got to cut back on turnovers and penalties. Just all the sloppy stuff has got to really just back down. Let's start with the turnovers. Turnover margin, they're 10th, but it's a little deceiving because in the losses that the Seahawks have had, they are getting pummeled when it comes to turnover margin. Giveaways, 11th in the league. Takeaways, uh, 13th. But there's the number at the bottom that really stands out, and that falls on the quarterback. Interceptions thrown percentage, almost three a game. 23rd in the league. That ain't good. Now the penalties. A lot of you are going to point to uh, DK Metcalf and those personal fouls and all that, but it goes bigger than just DK here. We're talking everybody. Uh, we've seen plenty of false start penalties. We've seen a lot of defensive holding and pass interference. It's been nasty all the way around. Penalties per play, penalties per game, penalty yards per game. It's all got to improve. Just got to clean up the little stuff. This is a team that has to be more disciplined than what they are. Can't allow the little things to affect you, especially with the schedule ahead. You got the Niners twice. You got the Eagles coming up. You got the Cowboys. Some really good teams here. You got to play perfect football. You got to be on your best behavior. So you got to clean up those things going forward. What's the biggest issue with this Seahawks team right now? There's a number of things you could point to, but what is the biggest issue? Chime in that comment section. Let me know what you think. Last but not least, on my midseason plan to fix 
this Seattle Seahawks team. Go back to this run-first identity. We heard from Pete Carroll and John Schneider say all offseason long that despite the investments that they've made in the skill positions when it came to Jackson Smith and Jigba and Jake Bobo and others, that their priority with this Seattle Seahawks team in 2023 was still to be a run-first, power-run game football team. But what have we seen the last few weeks? That the Seahawks, they start with trying to establish the run, things don't go well, and then that's just the end of it. They've ran the ball less than 40 times the last two weeks. And then the rushing statistics, I mean, you got an all-pro caliber running back, Kenneth Walker, and you're in the bottom half of almost every category except rushing touchdowns per game. That can't happen. You have to establish the run to open up the passing game, especially with the recent struggles of Geno Smith. Why are you not depending on your run game more to really get you through those things? Kenneth Walker's fantastic. Zach Charbonnet has shown some flashes. You've got a good backfield. Use it. That's where I'm at. Just want to see this team run the football more. Go back to your identity, your bread, bread and butter and who you are. Get the run game going. So, to recap, our midseason plan for the Seahawks. Abe Lucas, please, we need you healthy. We need you back out there. Lael Collins, arms wide open to bring you to Seattle. Get Geno Smith back on track. Come on, Gino. Play to your full potential. Get back on track. Get the jitters out. No more turning the ball over. No more penalties. Cut down on that. And go back to being a run-first football team. Seahawks do all that heading into the second half of the year. I think they'll be in good shape. Subscribe now for more Seahawks coverage. Let's take it to the commies and win the sub-battle this week. And we'll see you next time right here on Seahawks. Today.